Welcome to episode two of the From the Host podcast. I am Mike Shogren here with my good friend and fellow coach, Mike Riley. What's going on, Mike? Uh, doing great this morning. Love it. Love it. Well, before we get into the episode, I want to give a quick shout out to our mastermind student, Sunny. Uh, she just posted the other day in our Winning Wednesday post. I'm super thankful to Mike, Mark, and the team who worked so hard to make this group awesome. I know I've been MIA on the coaching calls as of late, but I've been hard at work. Fulham be torn units in the Texas Medical Center where I can serve others in their time of deepest need. I couldn't have even considered a project of this scale without this group. I'm a visionary and a starter, not a planner or a finisher. This group has been has both equipped me with tools I need for success and also with some really cool connections to team members outside of the group who will launch this project successfully. I am so thankful. So shout out to Sunny. She took down a 200 unit apartment complex of which 20 of those units are gonna be short-term rentals. So huge shout out to Sonny, uh, super proud of you. And uh, now it's time to get to work and get those uh, get those bookings coming in. So yeah, what do we have on tap for today, Mike? Yeah, so a question we've been getting a lot recently is when, when should I get on booking.com or some of the other OTAs that are not Airbnb and VRBO? It's a great question. And we get this question a lot. And honestly, it depends. Okay. It depends on the type of property that you have and the type of market that you are in. Now, personally, uh, I'm not a huge fan of booking.com for the STRs. I've found a lot of issues and fraudulent bookings and chargebacks primarily come from booking.com on the STR side, on the hotel side, we do very well with booking.com. We do very, very well. Um, they do charge higher fees. You know, it can be 15, 18%, depending on the packages that you have with them but our rates tend to be higher on the form we make that way. Um, what I would say is if you have a larger vacation style property, uh, they tend to do really well on Verbo, um, vacation rental by owner, uh, around a long time. And if you're, they tend to have larger, more upscale properties and they tend to drive a lot more longer bookings, you know, week long, two week long stays. Um, so if it were me, like a lot of my portfolio is on Airbnb, uh, Verbo and a direct booking website. I pulled a lot of them off of booking.com because I just getting a lot of chargeback issue. And what a chargeback is, if you're not familiar, somebody goes, uh, they stay with you, they use your credit, they use their credit card and then they call their credit card company after their day and they dispute the charge and then you have to fight it. But in my experience, it's really hard to win those cases, uh, through Stripe with against their, um, their banks and their credit cards. So I just pulled all of my STRs back off of booking.com because I got tired of dealing with it quite frankly. And it didn't justify the amount of revenue that we were getting from that platform. So we just pulled it off. And again, it's nothing against booking.com. I just found, uh, for my particular properties, it just wasn't worth the headache. I know a lot of people do really well with it, but a platform like booking.com, they are a booking platform, right? That's all they do. They are great at marketing. And it gives you a lot of flexibility on how you market your properties. You can run specials and different offers and different things. You can get really creative with it. Um, but you're responsible for vetting the guests. You're responsible for rental agreements. You're responsible for collecting payments, dealing with any damage issues, all those types of things. Whereas Airbnb takes care of a lot of that for you. Now, every platform has its pros and cons. Um, but that's just my two cents on booking.com. If it were me and I was getting started, I would start with Airbnb and then move to Verbo, and then have my direct booking website going after that. But while you're hosting on Airbnb and Verbo, make sure that you're collecting guest name, email addresses, things like that. You can do that through tools like Hostfully, which is the digital guidebooks. You know, So when somebody goes to use the digital guidebook, they give you their name and email address to access it. Or you can put little placards inside of your units that say, hey, thanks so much for staying with us. You know, Book direct with us next time for our best available rates, and you can have your website on there. So just a couple of quick tips on generating direct bookings, but that would be my strategy. Yeah, for sure. I know one of our core tenants is keep it simple. So when you're first starting out, you want to keep it simple. Typically we tell people start with Airbnb. It's the easiest platform to use by far. Um, VRBO is a little harder, but, but still pretty easy. They still remit taxes in a lot of areas and, and they make it pretty easy for the host. Um, so keep it simple at first. Now, if you're looking to scale really fast, really quickly, say you have you know, some investors, you got some partners, um, you may want to, to look at building a bigger property management system. 
Um, but still, booking.com can be down the road. Um, and keep it simple with Airbnb and VRBO um, and have a property management system, a PMS system. We like hospitable when you're first starting out. Um, so you don't want to make it too complicated for you and create yourself another job. You want to have the right systems up front. Um, so you're not, you know, doing any of the guest communications, the check-in instructions, the checkout instructions. You don't want to be doing that, um, manually. So have a property management system, start with Airbnb and, and learn it. Um, and then down the road, if you want to get on booking.com, it's definitely, definitely an option. So. Love it. Love it. Well, we kept this one short and sweet. Again, these from the host podcasts are designed to just be short, nice and tight, give you guys some action items and answer some of your questions, but, you know, share the knowledge from the students that are already in the mastermind. These are questions that Mike and I are getting asked every single week on our live coaching calls, and we're bringing them to you to just share those as extra free value for you guys. So if you're enjoying this uh, podcast, make sure you subscribe, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Uh, all of these from the host podcast will be on YouTube. We stopped uploading the full uh, STR secrets podcast on YouTube just because we found people weren't really engaging with them. So if you want us to bring it back, comment below and, and we'll get those uploaded again. But these are nice and short and sweet, nice and tight. Give you guys some action packed episodes. Uh, and if you're looking to really take your business to the next level and you're interested in the mastermind, just go to strsecrets.com slash apply. And you'll fill out a little form and then you can book a call with Mike or some of our other coaches and we'll see if it's the right fit for you. So that's it for this episode, everybody. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, STR Nation. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes. And we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.